and talking about all day long coming into the studio with me who's a writer in her own right miss marcia ambrosius hi marcia good to see you great again. to see you good to be here how are you you looking good thank you and i love uh, the greatest thank you you know why why it reminds me a lot of those classic songs mm. like really like an old worldly spirit song like Ella Fitzgerald yes that's that's where we were taking it with that vibe it felt very symphonic it was operatic it was I can see the theater it was you know performed in with the strings and the horns yeah. and it's really giving that vibe back the whole Lena Horn meets James Bond theme that's so, it yeah yeah that's, <laughs> that's, ex- the vibe. that's that's that is the vibe so what is the vibe of uh, Casablanco see how you just said it see how you had to make it whole it, it, it felt like something when you said it it Casa did Blanco. it sounds like when an experience we create, yes when we, we were creating an experience without even realizing it dr dre and myself in the studio um we had time on our hands it was during the pandemic and i decided that i just wanted to strictly concentrate on my writing and producing and team up with his team that he had at the time and he said, you know what, let's keep going. I just want to keep you inspired and let's see what happens here. And we got in the studio and before we knew it, there was a live orchestra and horns. Are you serious? It was everything. It was every bell, every whistle, every harp, every vibraphone. You name an instrument, it's on there. Like we really took it there musically. And Casablanco became this this place that you wanted to be just to experience yeah. new music again for the first time. Like when you used to run to the radio and press record because their favorite Tammy Mac was going to be on the radio <laughs> and she was going to play that exclusive, you know, that yeah. feeling where we don't have that now. We do not. It's, you know, it's social media and it's posted and it's downloaded or it's streamed. And, and it's, we're experiencing it most of the time alone versus with right. a collective. You used to run to someone's house yeah. and want to share that moment. And I feel like creating something like Casablanco feels like it needs to be shared. And the music is so intimate and sensual and sexy and all the things that you want to share that music. Yeah. So well, this Casablanca is not your first time working with Dr. Dre, though. No, we've been working together for years, yeah. like since the early 2000s. And he'd been in L.A. at a show of mine, actually, at the Roxy, if you can mm-hmm. believe it. I was performing with Floetry at the time. And he came down to the Roxy to see me perform and then invited me to the studio. And that was like... 2005. Yeah. So from there, I worked with him for the Game album, Buster Rhymes album, some stuff with him for the Compton soundtrack, and we moved on and on and on and on. And then there was an opportunity to do a project with him, and I ended up doing late nights and early mornings anyway. And, you know, timing is everything. So yeah. our paths kept crossing. And once it was time, it was it was time, and the time was now. So I want to ask about Casablanco, but I'm gonna toss in a, a little a, a, a little of my personal beef with Dre, just a little, <laughs> just a little. So I see him one day at Stevie's Creole Cafe, I think okay. it was, and I I go up to him and I say, Hey Dre, can I get you on my radio show? And he he had beef with KJLH because I guess back in the 70s or uh-huh. somewhere in the this 80s. This is too long ago to have beef. That's right. a long time. That's a long time beef. That's not even beef anymore. That's beef and broccoli and somebody else's sides. Go ahead. <laughs> so I guess in the 80s, KJLH didn't play as much hip hop as we do, okay. you know, as they did progressively. Mm-hmm. Um and so he was like, well, uh, y'all don't play hip hop. I was like, hold on, wait a minute. No, we do. Yes, we do. Right. And he was like, yeah, I only go on to hip hop stations. And I said, but you produce Tony Braxton. So, right. So true. I want to know from you, how is he very different when it comes to producing these R&B songs? Because he acts like he, you know, he had no hands on, on, on R&B music. So is there a difference between, because you've worked with him with Busta Rhymes right. and, and the hip hop side, mm-hmm. is there a difference? For me, no, because it's still very much hip hop, but it's very musical and it's very R&B. So his approach, no, what I bring to the table and which might force his hand to have to come down here to get JLH <laughs> is because not only did we tackle... Um, classic R&B, but we 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 touched something of of Stevie Wonder's um, 
I don't even want to give too much away, but it's on the album. Uh-huh. And we had to request clearance from Stevie himself to get that done. And Dre and Stevie had that conversation and we went back and forth with that. So I think I'm hip hop. Whether mm-hmm. I'm R&B, whether I'm jazz, whether I'm folk, whether I'm opera, all of these influences ultimately come down to that one thing. It's, it's just good. And he's a great, it's not only good, he's a great producer. And mm-hmm. that's not about just being hip hop or R&B. I think his approach with me was making sure that he was getting the best out of, with no pun intended, the best that he could find in me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I and we know uh, that he's a great producer because of his musical knowledge and your musical knowledge as well. But when you talk about when you say when I hear you say I am hip hop, it takes me back to last year's Soul Train Cipher. Oh yes, <laughs> <laughs> I had bars. I yes. was prepared. You know, I, I think everyone secretly deep down that sings really wants to rap sometimes, and I'm not going to deny that that part of me is not still there. I've mm-hmm. always wanted to rap. I was a rapper before I was a singer. I just found a melodic way to deliver yeah. my rhymes. You I know? mean, that's that's kind of what floor tree was, exactly. right? Exactly. So it was like, I'm going to be, be the melodic portion of what that is, but my writing and skill set in the delivery was still very much hip hop. You were, let me tell you, you were, you were, I don't even know, bussing bars <laughs> in that cypher because I don't think people knew that you did everything that you said. So, like, I was like, she got him, she got him, she got him. I mean, you were hitting them left and right. Like, I'm not new to this. Right, it was punchline after punchline. I'm not new to this, I'm true to this, is what it was. (laughs) So, yes, I I really did. I had had a lot of fun, and I'd do it again. (laughs) All over again? (laughs) All over again if I had to. But you've won a Soul Train Award, too. I have. I won Record of the Year. And that's why the iconic line, which my brother keeps calling, like that soul, that soul cipher for him. So no, it was iconic because you said the last time you were there, you won the song of the year. And it's <laughs> right? true. That was the last time you were there. I'm telling you, and, dropping them. You know, I was, I, I remember sitting there front row and I remember being um, nominated against great artists, one of which was uh, Adele in that category. And it, it's, you get to these stages in your life where the accolades come or they don't. You, mm-hmm. That acknowledges the acknowledgements come or they want, they won't. You'll just have to believe that you did the best that you could. And I remember sitting there like, I'm not going to win. 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 For far away, it, yeah, it's it's not, yeah, I'm not going to win. And then they called my name and I think I thought twice about who, who who's my, what's my, who's Marsha Rambrose? <laughs> who's that? Oh, that's me. Oh, far away. Yeah, that is my song. And it's the Ashford and Simpson songwriter you know, acknowledgement yeah. and then that's gotta be a good one. Superheroes yeah. of mine. And it was just uh okay, I'm on to something here. And I've been consistent in creating music that create moments. And I just want to make music that people feel, you know. I think there's a feeling that comes with true R and B, a feeling that comes with the spirit and essence of good music. And I've tried to do that. So does Nyla love your music? She does. She really does. It's amazing. Like she's seven now and she she really knows her mom. It's can she crazy. sing? She does sing. We're saying can she sing? She does. She can and she will. She's fearless. These kids have zero boundaries. Yeah. And she's just, she's a walking musical. Everything is a musical. <laughs> getting in the shower, homework, getting up in the morning. It's a wonderful song and she is the best song I ever wrote. Oh, wow. Co-wrote. That's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, you throw co right in there, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was your cypher. You said, um, I think in your cypher you said Jodeci was My your favorite, favorite group. Mm-hmm. And, and, and then you said you had six songs on your playlist. Six Jodeci songs? Or what number is Jodeci on that playlist? Oh, no, I had sex songs on my playlist. Oh, sex! <laughs> Girl, I all thought you said six! The, I said all of my sex songs are on your playlist. <laughs> so if you don't have Far Away, if you don't have Late Nights and Early Mornings, or Your Hands, or With You, or Anticipation, or So Got Good, it. or 69, or, you know, there's too many. So all of them. But if I did <laughs> have six Jodeci songs on my playlist, it would be... Let's go, because I'm a Jodeci fan. What you got? 
Forever My Lady, I'm Still Waiting, the interlude right before my phone, Girl, I Love You So, that one for sure. Yeah. Then off album two, it would be Cry For You, Feening, and Alone. And then I have to hop to show the after party, the hotel, and give you Freaking You, um, Love You For Life. And good love. Oh, you went all the way past. Things, yeah, Marcia. I know that was. I know, but I I pop those three albums and giving you the best of oh, what man. I want from them. I, <laughs> That's I, my uh, Joe to see. I do love alone. I do love. I'm still waiting, which were songs that were not singles. Right. But if you're a fan, oh, those are the songs the that you one. love for real. For real. Did you go to the show when they were out here? Uh, no, yeah, promo absolutely, with Joe to see. The I did. The fact that they opened the show with times we share. I could right? pass out. I was like, I'm going to faint. And I think this one lady, I screamed and she jumped. <laughs> it's like, what happened? Sis. I said, no, I can't calm down. This is like a dream come true for me. And I acknowledge them on not only the soul cipher, I did it intentionally because they're mentioned on Casablanco also because they're a big part of why I make music. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Like when I was a teenager... I love music. Like Stevie, Mike, Prince, they're my top three, no particular order. Mm -hmm. But Jodeci made me want to make music. Stevie, Mike and Prince made me really listen to music. But to make it, when I heard the harmonies that Casey and Jojo and then Mr. Darwin and Devontae came with that production and it was just, don't talk, I wanted just to listen. do that. Exactly, don't talk. Just, just listen. listen. And I did. Yeah. And I paid attention to it. I studied it. I created based off of that feeling and I've kept that R&B with me. I know that you, obviously by now, everyone knows that you've worked with Michael Jackson on Butterflies, but have you, have you worked with Prince? I almost worked with Prince. We talked about it. Um, he did have a song back in the day that he wanted Flowetry to do. And then that didn't pan out. But over the years, we'd gone back and forth. He was actually supposed to be on the intro of Late Nights and Early Mornings. Really? On anticipation. Did you have something for I him to say? I had a verse say? too, yes. And he was, it was a guitar solo and um, a harmonic part that we had. And I actually still have the template. I still have it in my iTunes as Stars Zero. Was it was Stars 09 by Prince and Marsha and Roses. And I've never changed the title of that. And uh, it's crazy you're playing Far Away in the background. It was supposed to be for me and Michael Jackson. I wrote Far Away with Michael Jackson in mind and he was supposed to do verse two. So Far Away was always me featuring Michael, Michael Jackson. Jackson. And it's still labeled as my that song in my iTunes to this day. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay, what about Stevie? Stevie, he gets his shot because <laughs> Casablanco, he is on <laughs> Casablanco now. Is he on there? Uh, well, we we took Dre and I took some liberties, and and Stevie is a big part of um of Casablanco. You're okay, you didn't want to give it away. Yeah, okay, no, sorry, but it's it it's I I uh, crossed off a huge bucket list moment, and um, yeah, I got that. The, my top three of all time in the world to have created with them and to have the the respect given to me by all three is just amazing, an amazing feeling. Yeah, it definitely has to be. Yeah. Um, I'm going to take a quick break and I'll, I got one more question to ask you about and then we'll let you go and then okay. I'll go home too because this is about <laughs> time for me to head out. We'll be okay. right back with Marsha Ambrosius, y'all. I see the phone lines ringing. I see y'all. What I love, what I love most, most about my favorite
experience and can get you the settlement you need. And let's face it, who doesn't need help today? Put it in Homa's hands. Talk to Homa about your automobile accident and let her handle the case. Put it in Homa's hands. 310-207-9009. 310-207-9009. Call the law offices of Homa Mulliam. 310-207-9009. Put it in Homa's hands. Radio Free, 102.3 KJLH. Marsha Ambrosius is here with us today. I've been talking about her all day because, um, you know, I enjoy when you come into the studio. So I appreciate you being here Thank when you're you dropping this me. new album, Casablanca. Oh, yes. yes. Casablanca and since you're looking soon. good and Thank everything, you, I mean, is that is that is that the love? I believe that so. I see glowing. There's there's love that you see glowing. It's it's um, a reassurance that I'm on my path. I think so many times as artists, especially Black women in this industry, and the uphill battle of finding your place and claiming it, it's not easy mm. for anyone. I'm only speaking from personal experience, but when you once you've once you've had that love nothing can stop you and I feel like I'm in that space and I feel like even musically it reflects in what I'm creating now and why I'm able to walk in rooms with a Dr. Dre and tell someone like him how I want things done yeah. in a room full of you know a 27 piece orchestra <laughs> and three horns and you know four super producers alongside him and it's if I didn't know who I was, could I have done all of those things? Mm. So, like, even celebrating women's, you know, it's our month. Yeah, Women's History Month. I mean, sure. it's our month, year, decades, centuries. Like, it's what we do. But to be celebrated in such a way, um, I should be. I deserve yeah. that. We all deserve that. And I hope anyone out there who really wants to, you know, find their way and stake their claim and you know, create that path for themselves. You have to love you. Yeah. Once you do, the doors open. It sounds so easy, but we're really hard on ourselves. It's, it's just a human condition to be self-critical, to look in that mirror and not like what you see, to look in that mirror and be upset about your surroundings. But I get to execute those feelings into the music that I make. So when you play far away or you pay, play butterflies, you're, I'm painting pictures of where I've been and who I've been at some point. And I can relate to where people are now and where they want to go. Yeah. And you can listen to music and just escape that. I love you how know? you speak about the music with such passion in your eyes. Um, was, it, was it a surprise that um, Say Yes was ranked number 52 on the 100 Greatest Songs of All Time? Man, I mean, surprised, happy, absolutely surprised. My Leo pride won't even let me go. Uh, yeah, duh, it is. <laughs> like, you know, like it is one of the sexiest. If it wasn't my song, it's one of the sexiest, most sensual pieces of It art definitely makes me moist. I'll field. tell you that. Moist is yes. such a precise word. <laughs> it sounds like it feels. Yes. <laughs> and yes, Say Yes is a very moist record. Mm -hmm. And surprising, no, I shouldn't be. It, it, it's up there. I'm not even sure if it's 52. <laughs> but on my playlist for anyone, I'm pretty sure it ranks a little higher. <clears throat> so You yeah. are on with Marsha Ambrosius. Just go right ahead. Marsha Ambrosius, good evening. Good evening. Do you remember about seven or eight years ago, you were in Seattle performing at the Moore Theater and you had your little baby on stage with her earphones on and you were watching her as you were singing? Wow, yes, I do. I think I have pictures of that from the Nyla tour. This is, this is the pilot that you were um, up there with and took pictures with you and the guy that you said you went up there and had Netflix and chill with. <laughs> oh, yeah, we had a whole moment. Oh, my goodness. Well, good to, good to hear your voice. You need to come back to Seattle and do another concert, young lady. We I will. I, I'm promising a, a West Coast run. I just toured uh, a little bit in the East Coast for the end of last year, so I am gearing up to doing some dates on the, uh, the West Coast, so I should make it up there to Seattle very, very soon. I still have that picture of you. As a matter of fact, 
every time I fly either San Francisco to Newark or San Francisco to Honolulu, and I start yawning, I always play far away. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the passengers are going to be very happy with that. I'm very I'm happy with that. that <laughs> last thing we know want that is for the pilot to fall asleep. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So you you talk about how being in the room with Dre and other producers and and a Michael Jackson, but I mean, let's not act like you're not in the room with these people all the time, Marsha. Right. Like Patti LaBelle, right. Alicia Keys, uh, Drake, Nipsey Hussle, right. which I love that song. Thank you. It's um, long though. It was supposed Songs to be. Songs are not that long anymore. I was totally caught off guard when that's because. I played it. Right. <laughs> and you're waiting for the moment. Like, okay, when, when's the fade out? Like, you know what? I think, and it's so unfortunate to have lost him so soon, but that album, that was his magnum opus. Like, it's, it's, that was his sayonara. That was his, I made it. I did this in life and I felt like it needed to, it deserved that triumphant ending, however long it took. It, yeah. it, didn't, it didn't need to have a, radio edit three minutes 10 seconds if it was going to be five minutes fine it needed to have that you did this nip you did this while you were here and we appreciate you yeah. real big you should have did it real big for a long time and for, as fans as fam you you allow it to live through the music it doesn't make it any less sad but you can listen to it and go, you know what, you deserve that. Yeah, I think that album, the final album, I think it was uh, thematic for most of us and right. also very, um, like, it was also something that got us through the death. Right, right. You know? Because you played it like, this is what you set out to do. This is what you wanted to do. Yeah. This was the album. And it's crazy. I, I mean, we knew him like from mixtapes up until that point. Exactly. And so to go out with your records being played on the radio for mm. the first time is just that kind of like... Yeah, I'll never forget it. And it's almost coming on, what, a couple of years, the anniversary of him. I say passing, I cannot say murdered. I it. There's certain things that you remember where you were when you heard the news, right. you know? And I remember it like it was yesterday, like, Mars, come through to the studio, I need you to finish this hook. And I'm like, Nip, you sound amazing on the hook. And I remember him redoing the verse, and it was like, yeah, that's me singing on the chorus. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you. I don't need to touch that part. It's perfect. And he was exploring sides of himself and growth on that album that... A lot of rappers at that time weren't making albums, like album albums with a right. theme, and that is a no-skip album. So by the time I got on there in the studio with him, it was, you know, if I could give you this moment, I would, mm -hmm. like, forever. And I listened to it now, and I was like, well, we see in the future with this? Like, if we could stay right here and live in that moment forever, like... We would. That's what we want as musicians. We want that moment. We want we want the candles in the sky in the stadium waving, waving from side to side. Like, yeah. that's what that felt like. And um, it's just so sad to have lost them. So sad, sad to have lost them, but uh, very good to still have his music uh, to memorialize him and that you're on it and that now yeah. you're on your... I mean, what number album is this for you? This is... Four? Am I tripping? Late nights and early mornings, uh, friends and lovers, Nyla. Yeah, this will be four. Yeah. Which is crazy. Outside of the three, the trilogy of the Flowetry albums, which is Floetic, Floicism, and Flowology. Right. And then however many mixtapes. I was doing mixtapes before mixtapes with mixtapes. <laughs> like, I was just in Atlanta at the time. Like, hey, Don Cannon, DJ Drama, we've got time. Let's do something. Let's do something. So, yeah, you know, I was doing, what, the sex tape series where I would take other songs and just add my little spin to it. And I had those popping. But creatively, yeah, this Casablanco is something that I've never done. Like, I can only express the magnitude of what it was to, to walk into the studio with Dr. Dre and decide that, yeah, this is it. This is what we're going to do. And the first, from the first song we recorded, we knew we were onto something and we were creating a world that we wanted to be in again, musically, you know. Well, and I, I thank you. a long you. time I felt like that. I thank you for that. I really do. Because uh, 
your fans are all the better for it, and we're the ones that get the reward out of that. So True. thank you for doing that. <laughs> uh, the single is the greatest, and it is the greatest indeed. I'm, y'all know I don't be lying to y'all now. This is really, you're going to love this single. And the upcoming project is Casablanco. Casablanco, and um, I have a song on the way for you. The Greatest was actually a part of the ESPN Heisman Trophy campaign, which is why you got a teasing taste of what Casablanco was going to be early with that towards the end of last year. But Coming For You will be a song called One Night Stand. And that song right there... I only know how to do certain <laughs> things very, very well and make All sexy right music right is now. absolutely <laughs> number one of them. So One Night Stand from Casablanco is giving you all the things. It's painting the picture. It's where you were. It's kind of like, think, what's the Friends and Lovers album? Where are my shoes? Mm-hmm. That moment, waking up in the morning and like, hmm, who is this laying next to me? I'm not quite sure. Okay. That was a wild night. Is that <laughs> champagne over there? Whose bra is that? Not clear. So yes, I've painted the picture. I feel like we don't create narrative in song anymore the way we used to. Well, so thank you for one, doing that. I'm giving. I appreciate you it from you. <laughs> Moist. <laughs> uh, all, all, right. Although I've never had a one night stand voluntarily. Oh, okay. Now yeah. that's touching. Yeah, I, I, I you see. Know. My one night stand has turned into a seven year old in almost five years of marriage. So my one night was a little bit longer than that, you know. But um, I'm all for the stories. Anybody want to give me their stories? You can. What was your one night stand, and how did that go? <laughs> yeah, not well. Um, <laughs> thank you so much, Marsha Ambrosius, everybody. Thank you for always showing KJLH love. Always. And we're certainly going to show you love right back all the time, Marsha. Thank, thank you. We're Radio Free, 102.3 KJLH.